Hello, my name is Stephen Witkowski. I also go by the artist name Saint Stephen. I'd like to welcome you to The Berkeley Files, technical showcase number five, FMOD and Unity. This demonstration is being made with a small custom demo I'm calling Rolling on the Farm. I think you can take a look at the aesthetics of the stage and see why. The goal within this demo is to collect the various cube pickup items in the environment, then roll to the goal using the haystack marble. This was a fun exercise for me, as I got to see FMOD and Unity working together, and I'm happy to walk you through how this all worked. To begin, we'll need both FMOD and Unity open so that the FMOD project can be linked to the Unity project, like so. While I've already linked the project, if you click the Browse button next to Studio Project Path, this is where individual project files can be connected to Unity. Moving over to FMOD, I'd like to show the ambience event that has been created. You'll notice that there are a number of layers of different sounds here. We have our default low-level farm ambience loop, as well as a couple of scatterer instruments all set within a loop region. These events are a function within FMOD that allows for randomized generative audio. These act as great complements to the static audio ambience loop and help give a more convincing natural feel. In the deck view of all three scatterer instruments, there are a number of sounds of a few different types of animals. One scatterer instrument is for bird chirps, one is for rooster clucks, and one is for cow moos. There are also min and max spawn intervals set determining how often a sound from the set will trigger within a given time range, as well as a min and max scatter distance, which randomizes how the sounds in each set are panned within 3D space. Polyphony has been left set at 1 for each event, while pitch randomization has been applied in various degrees. It may be natural, for example, to increase polyphony for bird chirps, but it's also worth considering how dense an environment is meant to be, as well as how closely sounds will trigger in the first place as you tighten up spawn intervals. Let's play everything back to see how they sound together. Let's see if we can get two moos in our example here. There we go. Going to the cube pickup event, there is one multi-instrument track on the timeline. I've used cowbell sounds for the pickups, as they fit the farm theme and music well. Before looking closely at the music event, there is a group of game objects in Unity worth showing, called Music Controls. This group shows we need four pieces of audio. Start or level music, change music which conveys to the player that they are nearing their goal, win music, and lose music. The play cube object is assigned to the start music, the change cube object is assigned to the change music, and the win and lose music are tied to the win cube and lose cube objects, respectively. We have the music that needs to be switched between, represented in FMOD as start music, change music, win, and lose. This has been set up as a horizontal score so that we can go from one piece of music to the next, and then to the stingers. A change parameter has been created, and as the notes describe in the bottom left corner, a value of 0 plays normal music, a value of 1 plays the change music, a value of 2 plays the win music, and a value of 3 plays the lose music. We also see these values notated in the change parameter. Both the start and change music have a loop region set and have async, 
cut and loop enabled in the deck view. Cut is worth noting in particular, as this will cause the prior music to cut when music tracks are switched. And ADHSR has been set for smooth fades as well. The green regions are transition regions, while the blue flags are tempo markers. With these set up, we can jump to different pieces of music based on beat, note, or even bar. Highlighting a transition range, the deck view shows where the green dividing lines are coming from. These are quantization intervals, in this case quarter notes, that determine the points at which transitions occur when the change value moves from one number to another. The programmers for this demo, thankfully, have a script set in Unity that has already mapped where all these fmod events go, so we are able to work through the process without wondering how to get our audio mapped in-game. Notice how the event names match with fmod, and we have our change value numbers here. However, adjusting the where and when they trigger is still vital. Hopping back to Unity, let's take another look inside the music controls. If we select the play cube object, it currently has no mesh renderer applied. This is because it is acting as an invisible trigger for the start music. Highlighting the change cube object, this also acts as an invisible trigger, and this sends the value of 1 over to fmod so that the change music plays. The win cube and the lose cube are the treasure chests on the right and left of the bottom of the play field respectively, and send the values of 2 and 3 to fmod. For the cube pickups, these are trigger events within Unity that have box colliders, so when those objects are touched, they trigger the cube pickup event in fmod. The ambience emitter is a 2D object that sits above the play area and plays back the farm ambience heard previously. In the 3D room object at the bottom left of the play area, a 3D sound emitter has been made. It's set to start immediately upon play and stop outside of the designated area, which in this case is a body of water. The 3D room event in FMUD is set up similarly to the ambience event. There are two static ambiences with one scatterer instrument. If we play that back, we can move the 3D spatial effect around in the preview pane. Let's cover how the rolling event works within FMUD. The base rolling around sounds are a combination of marbles and luggage wheels, while the supporting scatterer instruments are made up of footsteps and leaves. Both of the main rolling sounds are loops, and volume automation is set to change with the speed at which the marble rolls. Within the mixer window, there is a tab labeled Snapshots. Snapshots are settings that change the mix inside a game. One common instance of this would be pausing. The pause snapshot essentially mutes the entire mix, so if we play the game music, then pause, the music is then cut. Unpause, and the music comes back in. The ducking snapshot lowers the volume of the ambience when the win or lose music plays. In order to make that happen, all that needs to be done is to drag the ducking snapshot to the music event timeline under our win, lose, and end regions. With all this audio work done, there are two things that have to be done in FMOD. One is create banks that Unity can load and unload when needed, and the other is send the build itself to Unity. For this project, a master bank for everything is used. You might be thinking, Stephen, how did you get these awesome visuals? Well, 
while I don't consider this the primary focus of this video, I think I'll show you how this demo came originally and my final product. I found free assets from the Unity Asset Store and compiled this wonderful theme, textures, 3D models, and all. I mean, look at these perfectly proportioned farm animals. All of these objects and textures have been scaled, and the 3D objects have had mesh renderers and mesh colliders applied, as well as materials. All right, you've seen a few seconds of the demo at the top of the video, but it's time to see the full thing. For thoroughness's sake, I do want to roll over the lose cube, or treasure chest, as it were. You'll notice something right away. The chest is not triggering the lose music. Remember that our music event in FMOD moves from our win or lose music to a silent looping region. We'll transition quickly to another take to show it functioning as well as the 3D room. into the 3D room. And out. Thank you for joining me for this technical showcase of my FMOD and Unity demo project. I hope you enjoyed this video. The next exhibit will be of a WISE and Unity integration of branching scores and stingers paired with some classic gameplay from Mirror's Edge. I'll see you in the next episode in the technical showcase of The Berkeley File.